Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala Muhammad. Now the topic that we have for today, uh, listen carefully, it's nice, it's easy. There might be some things that, you, that will uh, remain in your mind. It's good, keep them, and it will be beneficial. In the Quran, we've got the term dunya and akhira, both of them 115 times each. Dunya is 115 times mentioned in Quran, and also akhira has been mentioned 115 times in Quran. Now, the body that I have, the human body, Alaikum salam. The human, alaikum salam. The human body that I have, it's fifty percent of my existence, and my soul is the other fifty percent of my existence. So fifty percent is mine, my body. Fifty percent is my soul. Quran says, "ليس للإنسان إلا ما سعى." That is whatever man does is what his efforts are. Whatever his effort is, is what he gets. So, in the this world that we are living in, we get help. We get help from ghaib. Ghaib means unseen. And it is a very interesting and a Quranic topic that behind the scenes there is some news, there is someone who is constantly helping us. Many a times you see that you want to get into the best of schools, but you don't get. Some men, they want to get, marry someone pretty, beautiful, rich. They can't get that. Or, for example, someone wants to live in a very nice house, but he doesn't get, uh, get to get, live in there. Now, sometimes you find these elements, but never... And people, they think that if you go to a very nice school, you will be very much respected. If you live in a very lavish big house, you will be honored. If you drive a very big car, an expensive one, people will respect you a lot. Many a times you see that people, they have all of that, but the respect is not there. Sometimes you find someone driving a very run-down old car, he is respected far more. Or living in a very humble dwelling, he is respected a lot more. So. Things that we see in this world, all the work that we do, it's only 50%. And the other 50%, it's done by the unseen, from ghaib. Like for example, if you take a seed and if you plant it in the earth, will it grow or not? We don't know. If it does grow, will it bear fruit or not? We don't know. So my job is to plant that seed the remaining, that is the 50% I do, the remaining 50%, it's not my work. What happens and what the outcome is going to be, that's nothing to do with me. Or people, they get married, sometimes they don't have children, many a times they have children. So whether or not someone will be blessed with children or not, we don't know. The 50% that is theirs, that they have to get married, they do. The remaining 50%, it is upon Allah, the Baraka wa ta'ala, whether he gives it to them, whether he doesn't. So, many a times, you get into the best of schools, but then as to whether or not you will pass and get good grades and come out, and even if you do get good grades, will you pass? Uh, will you get a good job? We don't know. So, my job is to do my work, and that is to study, or to do whatever it is, then the remaining, it's upon Allah, the wa ta'ala, that He fulfills. Now those of you who are new learners, drivers, and you've started to drive cars, you may have noticed that these learning cars, uh, you are sitting on the wheel, and all of a sudden when you want to turn, and you want to go fast, you see that someone is applying the brakes. So you are not applying the brake, the brake is being applied by that instructor because he's got an extra break he knows that you are a learner so he wants to keep you safe and if you want to drive fast he applies the break sometimes you are going too slow he starts accelerating so 50 percent is your work 50 percent is from ghaib from the unseen 
Now to make this uh, topic understand even better and make it easier to understand, I'll give you some more examples. Like for example, Allah wa ta'ala, sometimes He inspires. He inspires and this inspiration is called Ilham. He inspires. For example, if you've seen, you had a quarrel, you had a fight with someone during the day. At night you have a dream. You see whatever happened during the day at night. So that is just a dream that you are having. An action replay of whatever unfolded during the day. You are seeing it at night. Sometimes what happens is that uh, things that are going to unfold. You have a dream and you are told in your dream this is what is going to happen in the next few days. So you wake up and you, you find out that yeah this was told to me in my dream and it happens also as it was told to you. So that what you saw now, that is your future is being said to you and it happens as it was told to you, that is help from the unseen, help from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Now to make this understand even easier and better, Fir'aun, he is the enemy of Prophet Musa alayhi salam. He has a dream, Fir'aun has a dream and in the dream he was told that uh, Musa, a child will be born and that child is going to ruin your rule, ruin, ruin your kingdom. So Fir'aun when he woke up and he asked the, and the magicians to interpret his dream and they said yes what you saw is that a baby will be born and he will destroy your kingdom. So he got worried. So he gave the orders that every baby boy that is being born should be killed to protect his kingdom. So, but Allah what here he does that he gave an inspiration to Fir'aun that a baby will be born and the baby will ruin your kingdom. Now here to Prophet Musa's mother, Prophet Musa's mother she is pregnant. Allah gives her an inspiration, an ilham and she also is informed that the baby will be born, you put the baby in the basket and I will take care of the baby. So here she also has a dream and she puts the baby in the basket. Now a baby in the basket, a baby he cannot do anything. He has no might, he has got no energy. He cannot do anything. He, can, he doesn't know right and wrong. He doesn't know how to take care of himself. Allah said put the baby in the basket. She put the baby in the basket. Allah said to her that put the basket in the river. She did that. Now then the older sister of Prophet Musa was following the basket just to see where it is going to. The basket ended up in front of the palace of Fir'aun. And the Fir'aun's wife Asiya, the queen, she was out in the river. She was having a bath there and she sees a basket in the river. She told her maids to go and get that basket. When she brings them, they bring the basket to the queen, she sees that there's a beautiful baby in the basket. She looks at the baby and says that this baby must be the joy of my heart, the delight of my eyes. And she says to Pharaoh, the king, that we don't have a child. Let us raise this baby that has come to our palace. Fir'aun has a look at the baby and he says that maybe this is that very baby who has come to ruin me and to destroy my kingdom. Now there in the first example, Prophet Musa's mother, she was inspired. How? That she has to put the baby in the basket and she did so. The 50% was her job. She abided by her 50%. The remaining 50% was upon Allah to take care of the baby. So 50% of whatever we do in this world is ours. The remaining 50% it is Allah. He does it. Just like the example, keep that in your mind. When you plant a seed, your job is just to plant the seed. You give the water, you put the seed in the, in the dirt and then leave it. Whether it grows or whether it doesn't, we, that's not our job. Our job is to do, the, do our task that we have done. It is upon Allah that He grows that seed or if He does not want to grow the seed. 
Then Allah says to Prophet Musa's mother that you don't worry, you just put the baby in the basket, we will return the baby to you. And he did. As he told, as the promise he gave to Prophet Musa's mother, the baby also was returned to the mother. And now the baby, uh, when, when Fir'aun, uh, he says that the, the baby wouldn't uh, uh, take milk from any one of the women who were there. He brings the best of nurses, the baby wouldn't take the milk from anyone. Now here he says that anyone who can come and help us and nurse the baby, Prophet Musa's mother is also informed. She comes there and the baby starts drinking milk from the mother, the real mother. But Firaun doesn't know that she is the real mother. So the baby was given back to the real mother in the palace of Firaun and there he grew. So the 50% that she did, Allah Taala, He returned the baby to the mother and also he, his mission was that Prophet Musa be born and be raised in the palace of the king Fir'aun and from there he starts his mission and ruins and uh, ruins Fir'aun. That is how Allah works. Now if you look into the history of Islam, we've got so many battles that the Prophet also was present in those battles. One of the battles is the Battle of Badr. In the Battle of Badr, initially it wasn't planned and uh, it wasn't supposed to uh, take place. Now the Muslims, they were kicked out of Mecca. Rasulullah, with all the new Muslims, he comes and settles down in Medina. Now all of their belongings were seized away by the people of Mecca and the Muslims were ousted and sent out of Mecca without any possessions. So empty-handed they had to leave. Now Rasulullah informs them there's a big caravan which belongs to the people of Mecca. It is going towards Mecca. They have looted and plundered you. They have seized away all your belongings. It's a good time now you can go and take away that caravan for all what you have lost from them, you can take it back from them. They say, okay, Ya Rasulullah, they come towards that, uh, that place and then the, the, the Meccans, the people of Mecca, they saw that there are, some, there are some Muslims coming from far away. They saw that they are very few in number, when it's in reality, they were not few in number, they were a lot. Allah made them look very few. That is that help Allah has given from the unseen to the Muslims. That says, يُقَلِّلُكُمْ fi أَعْيُنِكُمْ That is, it seemed that they were very few. Now when they saw that there are very few people who are coming towards them, those people, they said that we'll send our slaves just to go and uh, hush them off and send them away, drive them away. But then when the slaves come the, and see that there's a big number of Muslims who have come and who have attacked them and they seized away all their goods and whatever they had lost, they regained it in, and won in that war. So in this war also, Muslims were helped. How were they helped? Allah made them look a very few in number, whence in reality there were so many in number. So Allah, He helps everyone. Sometimes He helps through angels. Sometimes He helps through objects. Sometimes He helps through insects. Sometimes through birds. Now, for example, in the, in the, when the Abraha, He came to attack the Kaaba, Allah, He wants to protect His house, His, uh, that is, um, Kaaba. The custodian or the caretaker over here is Abdul Muttalib alayhi salam. They come and say to him that we've come to destroy the Kaaba. He says the Kaaba has someone who will take care of him. It's not my job. Then he comes out from there and when, he, when Abraha, the superpower of that time, he comes with his most sophisticated army of elephants towards the Kaaba, Allah sends very small birds swallow small uh, swallow sized birds and then these birds had little uh, stones rocks in their paws and in their beak one stone in the beak two stones in their paws small tiny spoon stones size of a chickpea they come and they throw these stones on the army of the elephants and those little stones they devastated and destroyed all of this army 
and crushed them, pounded them, killed them, ruined them. Nothing remained. So that is how Allah helps. If you are sincere in what you want from Allah, He also is sincere in providing His help to you. So 50% you do, 50% He does. Or for example, another example can be mentioned over here, from Hazrat Maryam alayha salam. She is a noble lady, very chaste, very good. People of her time started mocking her when she had given birth to Prophet Isa alayhi salam. Now she was good, there Allah also helps her. And Allah, how does he help her? By making the baby speak. The baby spoke and said, I am the servant of Allah. To me a book has been given and I have been made a prophet. And I have been made uh, to be good to my mother and he hasn't been, I haven't been made, made to be wretched and bad. So that is help from the unseen that Allah to protect Hazrat Maryam alayha salam, he makes the baby speak in favor of the mother to prove her innocence and that she is good. Sometimes Allah he sends help via the jinn. Jinn are also a creation of God like we are the creation of Allah made of dirt and clay there's another creation made of noor. They are the angels made of light. There's a further creation made of fire. They are the jinn. Iblis, shaitan, is also made from fire. He is, he is a jinn. Now Prophet Sulaiman, alayhi salam, he also is a ruler and Allah has given him so much of might and charge. Here Prophet Sulaiman, he, he had lots of constructions. He had many underwater constructions. Now underwater constructions to be done by human beings, not possible. So there he used to get that help from the jinn. Jinn, they used to come and provide their services in making, building all these big monuments and structures under the water. So Allah helped Prophet Sulaiman via jinn. Now sometimes Allah helps via unknown people. Like for example, Prophet Musa's life was in danger. Someone comes randomly and says that Musa leave the town. Your life is in danger. Don't stay here. So there Prophet Musa, he also leaves the town and he was saved. So that is how Allah helps. That if you are obedient to Allah and you are within the rules of Allah doing what he has asked you to do and then uh, forbidding and keeping away from all that he has asked you not to do, he helps you. He helps everyone. So the 50% that I do, I do. The remaining 50%, Allah, he does, he supports and he helps. So that was another example that was mentioned from Quran that Allah, he helps everyone. And those, another example is in the battle of uh, Badr, Allah sent so many angels also. Initially, Allah said, I'll send you 1,000 angels. Then he said 2,000, 3,000. And then he changed the figure and he sends 5,000 angels to help the Muslims to win the war. So that is how Allah, he supports and then he helps. Now, one of the easier tips that I'll give you today, just keep that in your mind. 50% is yours, 50% is from God. 50% that you have to do is that you have to pray. Allah says in Quran, Ud'uni, you pray, you call upon me. Astajib lakum, I will respond to your call. So 50% of yours is that you pray. 50% of his is that he will accept and he will grant your du'as, grant your wishes. So this was a little bit about the 50% that you do. Oh, another example can be mentioned, Prophet Ibrahim. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, he was serving Allah, helping uh, educate people, preaching them. And then he also stood against Fir'aun. Fir'aun said that now that he stood against me and I am God, he has to listen to me and he doesn't, so he has to be punished. Says how should he be punished? He has to be thrown into the fire. Now the fire that was prepared to punish Prophet Ibrahim was huge. Many forests were cut down, a big fire was set ablaze and in that big fire no one can go closer to it. It's so massive. 
So they had to make a big swing. Prophet Ibrahim was put in the swing and from a distance that swing was thrown, flung into the fire so that Prophet Ibrahim lands in the middle of the fire and gets burnt. Now there, when Prophet Ibrahim lands in the fire, Allah says to the fire to be cold and to be peaceful upon Ibrahim and it changed into a garden for Prophet Ibrahim. So 50% was Prophet Ibrahim's work, 50% was Allah's work. That what Prophet Ibrahim had to do was to invite people, teach people and then um, put them on the right path, correct them and then he was caught, he was punished by the uh, ruler of that time. Allah also helped him by his 50% by saving him, by changing the fire into a garden and making it cold. So that is how Allah, he helps everyone, the mu'mineen, the believers when they are on the right path. وَسُبْحَانَ رَبِّكَ رَبِّ الْعِزَّةِ عَمَّا يَسِفُونَ وَسَلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد